All right, good afternoon, everybody. We'll take questions for Avalanche head coach, Jared Bednar. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Hey, Jared. Um, I assume today's practice is optional since you're talking to us right now at two, our yeah. time. Yes, it was. Yeah, we have a bunch of guys on the ice. Some guys are working out and doing recovery work and seeing the trainers. So it's just uh, get what you need day. I assume uh, Alex Newhook is on the ice. Is there uh, any update on when he might play or how he's doing in terms of video and stuff like that? Oh, I sat with him today, went through our five on five. Um, I don't have a a firm date on when he's going to play. I'm still making some decisions here, but um, he's up to speed now on both the penalty kill and five on five play. Um, he'll do some power play and, and see some video again tomorrow. So he'll be ready uh, when we choose to put him in. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Hey, Jared, I wanted to, to ask about Jonas Donskoy. I know obviously he was scoring at such a high rate before he went on the COVID list and hasn't necessarily had a lot of goals since then. I just was wondering, how have you felt about his play in the last, couple, I guess, week or two since he's been back? Yeah, I think he's been great. Um, you know, I talked yesterday about how he affects our power play and how he helps that out. Um, he's been real good in that area. I mean, I, I don't see a, a big dip in his game. Obviously, he was um, – scoring and confident before he went out it's hard to sort of keep that confidence when you're out that length of time but he's he looks quick to me he looks like he's skating well making plays um you know very similar to before he went out for me any other questions for jared all right thanks jared appreciate it all right thank you All right, we'll take questions for Avalanche defenseman Kale McCarr. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Hi, Kale. Um, I was wondering, when you were, were growing up and watching hockey, what defensemen, I guess, were your idols or, like, who did you look up to most when you were growing up? Yeah, um, I had quite a few, to be honest. Um, at a really young age, a lot of – watched quite a bit of Lidstrom. Um, and then uh, more growing up, a lot of Drew Doughty, Eric Carlson – um, quite a bit of Duncan Keith as well. I was always a Chicago fan growing up in Calgary. The um, minor hockey association I played for was the, we were called the Crochow Blackhawks. So we basically had the same logo. And um, so I was a pretty big Chicago fan too. But um, yeah, those, those were definitely guys that I uh, looked up to and took a lot of points from for sure. Sean Keeler, Denver Post. Hey, Kale. Um, I was wondering two things, how, how you kind of, I think I know the answer to the first one, how you react when people put your name in the Norris Trophy talk. And I know individual accolades are as important to you as what the team does, first off. And second, what, uh, where you think you've come the furthest in your overall game from a year ago, that first spring, uh, to, to now? Yeah, um, obviously, I'm honored to be in that discussion. Uh, I don't know if I should be even in that discussion for this year, just considering the um kind of the year I've had but um no overall uh just obviously honored to be in that discussion and then sorry do you mind repeating the second part of your question there yeah wh where do you think your overall game has come the furthest now in, in year three or basically almost year two for you yeah um I think at the beginning of this year especially um just the consistency factor being reliable on the defensive side of the puck um, that's just something I've just wanted to kind of mold my game into. And I think um, it, it's been struggling a little bit lately, but it's just getting back on track and making sure that you're doing the things right. And a lot of it is just making sure that um, as a decor, we're able to move the puck together um, well and, and efficiently and get it out of the zone. And sometimes we've been um, just getting unlucky with some bounces and turnovers lately. But um, I think at the end of the day, it's just, I always say this, but I think it's just looking for that consistency on both ends of the ice and making sure that um, when the team needs me, I'm reliable in any one of those situations. So I'd probably say that. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Hey, Kale, you answered Peter's question. You basically mentioned a bunch of Norris Trophy past winners. <laughs> I mean, Keith, uh, Dowdy, all those guys. Um, does that say something about 
how proud you would be if you got an opportunity to win this award? Yeah. I mean, obviously I'd be very, very uh, honored. Um, like I said, I don't think um, this is a year for me where I should be considered in the, in the main discussions and stuff. There's so many incredible D and um, to see how the game's evolved in terms of defensemen over the, over these past few years, especially it's just incredible, but um, no uh, to going, going back to those guys. It's just, I watched a lot of them growing up and um, obviously they were high caliber guys and they, they still are today. So um, no, I still try and take points from their game. And obviously you look at a guy like Drew Doughty who plays an incredible amount of minutes every single night. And it's just such a, such a consistent guy um, night in night out for their team. And then um, obviously Duncan Keith, when they were going through the, the Stanley cup um, runs there, it was just, he was such a backbone of their team and so agile and able to kind of move the puck. So uh, I, I took a lot from those guys for sure. Pat Graham, Associated Press. Hey, Kill, thanks for taking the time. So we were talking to Belly yesterday, and he was saying that uh, when he went to Sweden, he wasn't sure that he could cut it. He didn't, he needed, and then he got some confidence and knew he could play on that level. I guess growing up, was there a moment when you had to convince yourself you could play on that level, on that, on that extreme level? Yeah, um, I think, yeah, I mean, coming through minor hockey and stuff, I obviously always had aspirations to play um, at a very high level. It's a, it's your, it's a kid's dream when, um, when you're growing up and, I think definitely the turning point was probably my quadrant years and, and going into the AJHL is when I just started to fully mold my game into what I wanted to be, whether it was a, a basically an offensive defenseman. And um, I think for me, it was just tr keeping, keeping to build that confidence every single season and, and um, just gaining trust from uh, teammates in terms of things that you want to do, whether it's carrying the puck up the ice and whatnot. But I think for me, that was just a big thing is just improving every year and making sure that um, your confidence never takes a big hit, regardless of how you're playing and stuff like that. And um, just throughout the process, even going back to watching those guys, just trying to learn different things and, and uh, <clears throat> try to evolve as a, as a person as well. So um, I, I could definitely pinpoint a few moments and stuff, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably keep that to myself for now. So. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, Kale, this is kind of an off-topic question. One of my coworkers is working on a, a Mother's Day story and was is asked, he, she's gathering stuff about athletes' favorite uh, dishes that their moms made growing up. Is there a, a favorite meal that your mom cooked for you guys when you were a kid? Good question. Um, no, my mom's a great cook, but um, I think... We made growing up, I feel like we made quite a few different soups, um, like a minestrone soup and stuff like that, whether it was my grandma or my mom. But um, those were always so good. Like you look forward to those. Um, just a lot of a uh, lot of things basically thrown in a pot and, and put together. And I think I think it was my grandma. I think she made or maybe it was my mom's recipe. I'm not too sure. But Elvis soup. And it's basically kind of like a play on minestrone. And um, so that was pretty good. But uh, yeah, that's kind of. Those two stick out for me for sure. Last one here for Kale, Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Kale, uh, Belly was telling us yesterday that he thinks the secret of his 500 games in the NHL and even playing in the NHL stems from the fact that when he went from France to Sweden, he was such a good team guy and such a positive guy that they kept him around and then he grew from there. Uh, he still believes that that's, that's why he's still in the NHL. How good of a teammate is this guy? Yeah, Belly's an awesome guy. He's he's just so positive all the time. Um, he can he can put anybody in a good mood, really. He's, he loves to talk and, um, you know, like like he even touched on, like just his positivity, it just brings the, brings the mood up on the team. And um, he is a leader. And I think that's just a testament to like how, yeah, like, like he said, uh, how long he's been in the league and everything. And, um, but no, he's definitely, definitely a very positive guy and a good guy to have in the room. That's for sure. All right. Thanks, Kale. Thank you. All right. We'll take questions for Avalanche defenseman, Ryan Graves, Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Hey, Ryan, there uh, seems to be something going on between you and Evander Kane. Uh, you got the elbow from him last Friday and then there was some stuff here last night. Any expectations on what might go on between you two tomorrow? Uh, no. Uh, I mean, I think both of us play the game hard. Um, I, 
I, I don't think the, this, the elbow is um, on purpose, honestly. I think that uh, a lot of people assume that he has a bit of a track record, but um, I think it was honestly kind of just a, a hockey play and um, kind of bad timing on my part and um, just unfortunate. Um, but no, I mean, we both play the game hard. Um, I think you see that a lot in the game where guys just kind of are going at each other and guys that play hard styles. Um, so, I mean, no, there's nothing going into it. Just um, I play everyone the same, play everyone hard. And um, it's just kind of the way the game unfolds. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Hey, Ryan, um, what's impressed you about Connor Timmins these last few games, or I guess just since he's come back up with the big club? Yeah, uh, Timmins looked good. Um, I think he's a, he's a good puck mover. Um, he sees the ice really well. So, um, I mean, he's getting a chance too with some of the injuries that have happened. Um, he's getting a chance to play on a more on the offensive side of the puck, which is where he's really good. So, uh, I mean, it's nice to see him flourish. I mean, he's been good in camps um, in years previous. He's made the, I think he's made the team out of camp the last two seasons, if I'm correct. Uh, so obviously, I mean, there's, he's got a lot of upside and it's nice to see him um, kind of starting to feel it a little bit and, um, and get some chances and, and kind of chip in and, and play a part in team success. Pat Graham, Associated Press. Hey, Brian, thanks for taking the time. Really appreciate it. I, I was wondering, I know you're going to stay true to yourself and what got you here, but is there anything you can learn from someone like Kale? I mean, can you take any, can you watch him and, and try to learn anything? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I wish I could play like Kale. Um, no, I, I mean, he, he's a special player. Um, I think there's things that you can take from his game. Um, I mean, just the way he, he, uh, he approaches plays and some of the things he sees on the ice and stuff like that. But uh, I mean, he and I are very different players. I think, um, we're on the ice together. I think it's um, a dynamic of more just using each other as uh, as what our strengths are. Uh, I mean, he's a he's an elite puck mover and uh, he's a great skater, so he can he can be a one man breakout. And in the offensive zone, he's obviously very dynamic. So I'm um, just trying to get the puck in his hands. And then on the other side of it, um, for me, I'm just trying to end plays in the D zone and um, try to get physical and and stop stop the play and stop the cycle and things like that and kind of facilitate the breakout and um, and just be kind of reliable. So, I mean, for sure you want to learn from him and you want to do things, but at the same time, different skill sets and different, uh, different playing styles. So, uh, I mean, he's a special player. Um, there's a lot of things that he does that I'll never be able to do, but um, definitely trying to learn from him and um, just uh, uh, the way he approaches certain plays and the way he thinks the game is uh, something that anyone can learn from. All right. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah. Thank you.